evening. This is Noreen Sumter on Beyond Potential, Live Life Your Way. And it is Tuesday evening. Tuesday is, as you all know for a year now, that Tuesday is one of my most favorite days of the week. Why? Because I get to be on the radio. I get to be on Facebook Live and I get to talk about things that are important to me, people that are important to me, and also I get to be inquisitive, right? It's like, (laughs) 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 this is a live show. (laughs) This this is uh, like, this is so fabulous. This is, I always say, this is not Oprah's show. I don't have a grip. I don't have a sound man. I don't, we just have people that come in and do what we do. Hi, Naomi. (laughs) So, (laughs) <laughs> See, it's Tuesday. <laughs> it's Tuesday. <laughs> and yeah, I get to do just that. Like mm. I get to say, do, be curious, get engaged and find really great people to talk to. And so <laughs> tonight on my show, I have a member of the cast from Aladdin. Can you believe they've done like two thousand shows i'm like just gagging already two thousand over two thousand over two thousand right i am i'm seriously gagging because i can't imagine doing two thousand of anything like but you know i guess you don't really sort of start out thinking you're going to do two thousand shows i guess you get to two thousand show by doing one show at a time Mm mm-hmm so anyway, before we launch into that, and before I bring my wonderful guest onto the show, I just wanted to talk about something I read in, uh, on Facebook today. I don't know how true it is, but, you know, there's this um, gentleman in Maine. This is how ridiculous this is. He has, he's trying to pass a bill where he says that um, the prisons in Maine are like country clubs. Why? Why is it like a country club? Because they provide the women sanitary products. Ew. So, yes, he does not want to supply sanitary products. That's the basic human, I'm going to say not even decency, right? What do you want? Like blood everywhere? Like it will be just like a big old bloodbath, right? Clots everywhere. (laughs) He, I guess, you know, truthfully, I guess he doesn't have a wife and he probably doesn't have daughters and he probably is just not a human being. Because just because a person has committed a crime doesn't mean that they shouldn't have the basic human rights met. Mm -hmm. You know, more than the human rights met. They should be like reconditioned and help them to retrain and reprogram so that they can actually come back into society and, and have a great life or create a great life for themselves. But I just thought that was kind of a little bit strange that, you know, I guess... You know, what, what can I say? I mean, the only thing would be I'd give him a slip and then I'd let him bleed out and see if he wanted to, well, how that felt with no no sanitary or no protective garments. <laughs> All right, so enough of that. <laughs> enough of that. Let's get on with the show. So my guest tonight is Stanley. Welcome, Stan. I'm, like, I'm glad Hi. you're live. <laughs> I love it. Everything that you just said, I'm just... <laughs> And enamored with you right now. I love it. <laughs> oh, so Stanley is a member of the cast from Aladdin. Yeah, thank you. You know, and Aladdin was written in the 17th century, right? Mm-hmm. So, and you know, th- so he's he's been he's been he was one of the members. I'm just so like shocked by this. I'm still at 2,000 over 2,000 yeah. shows. He is one of the original cast. From Aladdin. So welcome, welcome, thank welcome you, to the you. show. It must be great you're off today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I actually took a month-long leave of absence. Just to a pre- month? Just, just a month. I know. Everyone keeps saying, you've been in the show for five years and you only took a month off? Yes, because I like to get paid. Um, I took a month-long leave of absence to help produce my very first written one-act play, which is now at the Strawberry One-Act Festival. Uh-huh. Yes. And so how I met Stro- how I met Strawberry. Stro- how I, how I, see, look, I'm telling you, it's, it's live. It's live. Anything, anything can come out of my mouth, right? So, um, how I got introduced to um, Stanley was through Van, and Van was on the show. Mm-hmm. I think about two, three months. Time just goes for two months ago, and um, he was uh, pitching and talking about his one act strawberry festival 
and um, it's actually taking place right now. They're actually yes, doing the shows, and I went to the launch party. That was awesome, and uh, there were some really good plays. I saw the clips of the plays when I went to the launch. Party. Oh yeah, they looked amazing. Yeah, yeah. So tell us. I want to know a little bit about you. How does one? You know, if I was a person online and I want to get into Broadway other than practicing or is that Carnegie Hall? Oh no, you have to, you have to practice. You have to rehearse. You have to figure things out. Like, yeah. So, let me ask you a question. So you've done like over, you personally have pretty much done close to over. I mean, mm-hmm. like when you have, you have a vacation, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Well, we have like a uh, two paid weeks of vacation a year. Right. Time. Yeah. So when you're, when you, you, you've been on the show, you're off, what? Mondays. Right. Mondays You're off on dark. Mondays. Yeah. And how do you keep yourself, how do you keep it new? How do you keep doing the show new? Um, uh, you, willpower, caffeine, uh, love, of, <laughs> love of what you're doing. Yeah, right. that's the only way how you can keep it new and fresh. And a lot of times there are people that come in and out of the show. Right. Like we have something called vacation swings. If somebody's out for like a medical leave or like a personal leave of absence. So anytime new people come into the show, it just kind of revitalizes it because like you said, it's a brand new energy. Right. And so for a lay person like myself, when I look at, watch you on stage, I'm looking at the glamour and the glitz of it all mm-hmm. right and for you you've been doing it you know for five years mm-hmm. like i know when you first started like any job right because it's a job yeah it is you know because we don't really consider it a job oh yeah we consider it like oh he's doing his thing well that's why it's called show business and not show fun <laughs> so i want the show fun <laughs> yeah right so it's show you're doing this show business right how do you like i know like you said caffeine and mm-hmm. all this good stuff but like, how, like seriously, how do you keep it new? It's just... Because you know it by heart. I mean, I'm sure you could do your moves and your songs and mm-hmm. all those things in your sleep. Yeah. And you probably did do it when you first started. Well, that's the thing. Like, again, like I said before, anytime somebody new comes into the show, it just changes up the energy, it changes up the feel of it. Or sometimes we'll have rehearsals where we'll change up the choreography ever so slightly because it works in other companies. Or the director or choreographer doesn't really care for the way that it was done, so he'll change little things, like little nuances. So yeah. are they always changing the choreographers or the... No, it's always the same. Um, Well, our director choreographer is Casey Nicklaw, and he always will be our director choreographer throughout the show. Right. Yeah. So it's a successful show being on Broadway. It's a really successful show. What's the oldest 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 show that was on Broadway? The oldest? Oh, good. Mm, I honestly don't know. I mean, the oldest one I could possibly think of was like Showboat, and that came out like 19, what, 20s, 30s? Yeah. But I, I honestly don't know what the oldest show is. I can tell you what the longest running show is. What's Broadway the longest show. running show? The longest running Broadway show would be Phantom of the Opera. Oh, yeah, I went to see that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it's been on for uh, over 30 yeah. some odd years. Yeah. I went ooh, to see ooh, that. Ooh, ooh. And I. Um, Christine. <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> I fell asleep. <laughs> So you weren't just half masked, you were full. Okay. <laughs> no, I literally, fe- and I went to see Les Miserables. Les Miserables. Mm-hmm. I fell asleep on that one too. Ooh, I, oh, I, I love that one. I love me some Les Mis. I yeah. couldn't, I could, you know what it is for me? It's like going into dark places because theaters are usually dark. They bring and the lights cold. down, right? Yeah. And cold. Yeah. And so what happens for me is like, I, I really want to watch a show, but all of a sudden it's dark to me. That means, oh, lights out, TV's off. Oh, nod time. So yep. I usually just nod off. So I need to be in a place that has lights. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I can't. I will fall asleep. And I have been known to go out on dates to the theater. Mm-hmm. And um, the lights go down. The play comes up. I'm, I'm riveted, but I could feel... <sighs> Wait, what's your favorite musical? West Side Story. And I saw you Really? That. Yes. Uh, that is the second longest one I've done so far. Because I have done the international tour of that one for ooh, on and off for like three, four years. Right. Yeah. I love West Side Story. Are you excited for the revival? Like the movie? They're going to... Uh, they're going to do a movie? Yes. I did not know that. Steven Spielberg's directing. Really? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. They're remaking it. Oh my God, I love it. We mm-hmm. want to be in America. Everything's yeah. free in America. Okay, by me in America. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I feel pretty. Oh, so pretty. 
I love West Side Story. Except this time around, they're not actually going to dub the actors or actresses' voices. So yeah, they're going to do. Yeah, I've seen. They're it, actually like, going to like sing. Right, song. I've seen yeah. it a few times. I saw it a lot in London um, when I lived there. I've seen it. Um, I've I always I own it actually the mm-hmm. video copy. I love that show. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I will just play the music in my apartment. Yeah. And you know what else I like? Little Shop of Horrors. Oh, I love Little Shop of Horrors. Oh my God. Yeah, those little three. shop, little shop of horrors. Pop, she pop. <laughs> I'll be your dentist. <laughs> <laughs> It's one of my top five favorite musicals, I like movie love, musicals of all yeah, time. Yeah, I love those. Okay, so what are the movies? I don't think there are in. I haven't seen a lot of um, black, um, you know, African American yeah. type um, plays well, on Broadway. Yeah, why is that? Why do you uh, think that is? <laughs> the only thing I can think of is like the honest answer, which is racism. Okay. Um, a lot of the time, some uh, producers will put up shows that they feel like, oh, I get that. I can understand that. And it reflects my own life. I'm just like, okay, uh-huh. well, with the money behind it, if it's generally just cisgendered straight white guys, right. that's what you're going to get to produce the stuff. Right. Yeah. Um, which I think it's nuts because <clears throat> there is a show that I saw off Broadway that I absolutely love called school girls the african mean girls play which um a friend of mine joanna alexis jones who's in hamilton right now Uh she was in for like a good couple of months and it's one of those shows where i'm like this impacted me so much why isn't this on broadway huh yeah so i'm telling so there's a lot of really good plays there's a lot i have a friend that literally I, i have a friend that literally goes to a play almost every night of the week Mm-hmm. Don't ask me how she does it, but she when she said she said it, I have a play addiction. Wow. She goes, I she goes, that's how I get my fun. She'll go to a play at least. I'm gonna say she goes to a play at least four times a week. Well, tell her to come over to see Opportunity at the Strawberry One Act Festival Friday at yes. six p.m. You know, what? <laughs> okay, you can pitch it, but we're gonna take a break and then we'll come right back. Yes. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. Are you stuck in a rut? Negative thoughts, feelings, and conversations got you down? Hi, I'm Noreen Sumter, The Potentiator. Tune in every Tuesday at 9 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time and listen for new ideas on my show, Beyond Potential, Live Life Your Way, on talkradio.nyc. Who do you want to connect with? Are you an entrepreneur or intrapreneur looking to build your following? Welcome to our show. Follow Me Friday with Joan and Priya. Tune in every Friday at noon Eastern on talkradio.nyc. We're We're your digital digital connectors. connectors. Woo woo! What's up? (laughs) Talking Alternative Radio, 24 hours a day. And we're back. This is Noreen Sumter on Beyond Potential, Live Life Your Way. And I am with Stanley Martin, one of the cast members of Aladdin. Yeah. What's that song from Aladdin? I don't know any. Um, A Whole New World. That's like oh, one of the that, popular ones. That's yeah. one, I know that song. Yeah. Or uh, You Ain't Never Had a Friend Like Me. That's another one. Or Prince Ali, Fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> love mm-hmm. that song. Yeah. Oh, I love that Peebo Bryson version. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, that's a Peebo Bryson song. Well, yeah. No, they. Um, he did the pop version of it with, I think, Regina Bell. So who's orig- whose song was it originally? No, it's a part of, a, it's originally from Aladdin the movie. But whenever they do like the pop cuts, it, he was the one that they would go to. Like, I know they didn't have no music to it in the 17th century. I was about to say, yeah. I mean, they did. <laughs> but I just imagine like a lot of sitars and all that stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting on cushions and stuff. <laughs> So, 
like I asked you offline, um, if you were not a Broadway actor, mm -hmm. that sounds kind of cool saying that though. I'm a Broadway actor. <laughs> right. What would you have done? Um, I would have been a writer. Right. First and foremost, because it's one of those things where I now. So you write a lot then. Yeah. Reflecting back on it. I I would write like literally I started writing as soon as I could read and write. Why uh -huh. does that sound redundant? Um <laughs> it's one, in, one in the same, yes. I just yeah. Um like literally I would take my aunt's old typewriter and just start writing like murder mysteries all the time. Uh -huh. Which I blame my mother for because she would make me watch PBS, like Agatha Christie stories, like right. religiously. So and yeah. So speaking of your mother, you said that she owns a dance school. Yes, she does called Step Two Dance Center in Bucks County, Pennsylvania. And was she a was she a dancer herself? Was she on Oh yeah, I mean she still dances. I mean she uh she never danced on Broadway but she like danced everywhere else she's right. on like regional stuff and she's choreographed for commercials um different tv shows uh regional gigs theater community theater middle schools high schools like she's worked with a lot of people right so she must be really really excited because you probably fulfilled on one of the dreams that she had oh god yeah definitely who else who else in your family are our entertainers yes. um my sister she's also a dancer she's also a choreographer she's on a lot of tv she's on a lot of film my dad he is a vocal coach who is also a piano technician mm -hmm. um he also like used to conduct for different orchestras. He's a SAG after actor. Um, mm -hmm. have you ever a seen? SAG after actor. It's a part of. It's a film union. It's, okay. Yeah, okay. for the actors in the film union. <clears throat> um, have you ever seen Black Swan? Is that the ballet movie? With Natalie Portman, yeah. yeah and the big black punk. My bun. dad's the orchestra conductor. You can oh, see him really? halfway through, all the way to the end of the movie. And yep. so it was inevitable. You, you, so you have a sister. Any other siblings? Uh, no, that's it. That, that those are my only siblings. Right. What about yeah. family? Uh, other cousins, extended family? Any actors? And actors that's in the there? thing. For some reason, all of the men on my dad's side of the family, like all of my cousins, they're in some way shape or form a writer whether it's like a lyricist or a columnist like every last one of them writes right right don't know how that happened well i i, I tend to believe that um before we, i i believe in before mm. we're born and after we're born and the afterlife and all that kind of stuff i believe that that we choose our parents mm. you know we choose where we where we want to ex what we want to experience mm -hmm. so maybe you chose them because you had the freedom to experience what you wanted to go into. Because I'm sure you must have been dancing before you could even walk. Oh, yeah. Well, the funny thing is my mom would tell people all the time you that... You didn't walk, you just don't. I just, I turned out. Um, <laughs> literally, no, because when my mom was going to the doctor, at one point they said they couldn't find my heartbeat. And that's uh -huh. because I was wrapping around the umbilical cord. I was constantly just turning and turning and turning. Uh -huh. Yeah, whole dancing, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, that's great. Yeah, I, I do believe that we choose where we want to go. And I mm -hmm. think that. So, <clears throat> so tell me, give me a day in the life of Stanley Martin. Oh, my God. The first thing I do is I'm usually waking up by my two Pomeranians, um, okay. Odin and Hera. And then after Odin and Hera. 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 Yeah, I know I'm mixing up the mythologies. Okay. One's Norse, one's Greek. I okay. get it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I usually deal with them, uh, go to the gym, and then after that... Yeah, I know, because you kind of built there. Oh, well, thank you. Well, I try. I mean, hey, I, I've been well, out... Well, you've been... You gotta. You yeah. can't be a flabby dancer. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> that's the thing. I've been out of the show now for three weeks, so I'm just like, okay, I'm going to have to hit the gym every day, because as soon as I get back into that show, I'm going to have to retrain like myself to breathe, sing, and dance at the same time. It's a dance-intensive show. Yeah. So, so you haven't, you've been to the gym, but you haven't been doing hardcore like what you'd normally do? No, I've actually been going even more hardcore than what I would normally do because the show for the most part is a little bit of a workout. Yeah. I'm telling you, you should go see it. It's all, you would enjoy yourself. Huh. Well, mm -hmm. I, the, the closest to theater I've ever done was I used to do ballet when I, from seven to like 15, mm -hmm. ballet, tap, jazz, modern dance. And I was on stage singing, um, come on along and listen to. Yes. Come on. 42nd la, la, street. Yeah. Yes. I know that show inside and out. I've done that one to death too. <laughs> oh God. Right. So I, we used to tap dance and things like that. I never wanted to be a, a dancer on the, uh, but I did have dreams, which I guess it's like, dreams of being a ballet dancer as a mm -hmm. kid everybody does that right i mean right. Every, i don't know most girls but i kept mine a secret mm -hmm. right but i used to do ballet blocks and everything you mm. know you can see my gnarly feet ah. um <laughs> in the it, you know at that uh, we used to have stage and performances at the um 
once a year mm -hmm. and we'd go away to ballet camp and stuff like that. I really did love it. But <clears throat> again, why I didn't pursue that because I have a black body. I have an African shape and I couldn't get my bottom in mm. no matter how hard I tried. Yeah. You got to get, I'm from England. Yeah. Right? I'm 150 years old. And, um, back then it was like my instructor she would like get the because they had always had a pointer like a stick and she'd be like tuck it in tuck it in i was like if i could tuck it in it would be tucked in it can't tuck in anymore yeah and it the, was never going to tuck in and the reality is now we're actually a little bit more open and accepting of different body Absolutely. types especially because misty copeland she Absolutely. doesn't have like that automatic stick figure no yeah but she is now like the established ballerina. Right, yeah. exactly. So that was never going to happen for me. So, no. you know, and I didn't have any people that were frame of mind. So, you know, or anybody that was like the re point of reference, like mm -hmm. I could be. And I remember being a young person and seeing the Alvin Haley. Alvin Haley, yes. Dancers. And I was just like, wow, there are black dancers. Because mm -hmm. you just didn't see that when, for me growing up. So right. that was never going to happen. But um, yeah, I do remember I used to go to the ballet classes three times a week mm -hmm. and I did tap dancing. I love tap dancing. I still own a pair of tap shoes. Oh my God. I love tap. Tap is actually one of my favorite dance I'm, I'm, styles. I probably was suck at it today, but like, you know, I still have my shoes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I feel like tap is one of those dance styles. Like if you haven't taken class for like a good two, three years, as soon as you go back into it again, you pick it right up. Really? Like, yeah. I still can do a shuffle and the amount you know. of times I've actually taught class when I was younger and all mm -hmm. that. Um, and I've seen people do that. Like it just, yeah, it comes naturally to people after a while. So <clears throat> tell me, have you ever fallen on stage? Like, you know, I yes. still have my shirt. Have you ever, have you ever fallen on stage? Oh God. Yeah. And There's been plenty of times. What, what do you do? You just get back up and finish the rest of the routine. <laughs> You can't stop. <laughs> no, I mean, like there's a set piece that might be coming in. You might get railroaded. Like, no, you have to keep moving. Yeah. <laughs> so you just get up. Yeah. It's kind of like, you, um, did you ever see the video of Beyonce whenever she fell down that flight of steps in no, the middle I of a didn't. concert? Oh, my God. It was one of, uh, it was to her song, Ring the Alarm. And she's like dancing on the top of the platform and she trips and she, you can literally see her head just go boop, 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 all the way down the stairs. And then she pops back up and she finishes that number. Like that's like that's the adrenaline you have when you perform. You so can't she just didn't stop. feel a thing. No, I mean she, she felt it afterwards because right. then she was like, "Here's a bruise. Here's a bruise. There's a bruise. Oh, there's my chin." Right. But yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so when what's the what's the audience do when they see you for? Is it like a gasp? It depends on where it is in the show. If it's one of those things where you're like dancing with other chorus members mm -hmm. and you fall and then you bounce back up, it's not nothing crazy. But if it's like a moment where you have a solo. And you crash like has that, has that happened to you? Me like that? No. If I'm like around people and I'm dancing, and then all of a sudden I drop and I pop back up, yeah. Right. So is it case of like, um, <clears throat> you know, like in the workplace, it's like you forgot to take that mail piece out, or you forgot to finish that that um, project, or mm -hmm. you know, you did a typo in the a really important document. Mm -hmm. This is your choreographer. What does the choreographer say? Well, that's the thing. We'd, um, the choreographer isn't at the theater anymore. We have someone called a dance captain, which right. they're the ones who like maintain like the choreography and the look of the show and everything uh -huh. like that. And for the most part, they'll just be like, yeah, just don't do it again. Move on. Yeah, huh. it's not that bad. Right. Okay. Because it's not, if it's something that happens time and time and time again, uh -huh. then it becomes an issue. But for the most part, my thing is, it's not necessarily falling on stage. It's whenever I'm dancing and I've done the show so many times now, so like sometimes it can be a little automatic pilot. And I think about something for a hot second that doesn't have you to. Check out. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, wait, hold on. What's the next step? Damn it. <laughs> and then getting back in. That's right. happened. Because that's you, you, like you lost your presence. Mm -hmm. There was one particular time during Arabian Nights where all of the men, all of the men's ensemble, we have to turn and we're jumping in midair and our legs are up. Uh -huh. And at one point I was just like, oh, what am I going to eat tonight? And I'm like, <gasps> And I'm just standing still on stage and everybody else is up in midair. And I'm like, oh, crap, get back into the choreography, get back into the choreography. Yeah, like that right. happens. And, and yeah. that's a prime example that it is a job, mm -hmm. right? It is a job and that we do, you're human and there's moments of checking out or yeah. because you're so. But, you know, I want you to know that that happens in everything. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm reading this book, um, another book. I'm always reading books and it's called Critical Conversations, mm -hmm. right? And in the book, it talks about 200,000 um accidents happen deaths mm -hmm. happen in hospitals every year okay. why because um 
the guy in, in, in authority mm -hmm. does not want to be told what to do. And people get afraid to say, you know, to speak up or to call out a person in authority. So uh, there's an example in the book where this woman went in for a tonsillectomy mm -hmm. and came out with no foot. How, how, how do you get from her to her? Mm -hmm. I because don't. he didn't check the records. <laughs> people saw what he was doing, but they didn't have the courage or strength to speak up. So they didn't speak up. Oh my God. Yeah. I don't know why I brought that up, but I like, don't even. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> oh my God. I don't know why I brought it, but it seemed really perfect at the time while I was saying it. <laughs> oh, you checked out. You checked out. Right. It's like, <laughs> I was thinking about pizza. It's fine. Um, <laughs> we have a caller. Mm. Woohoo. Mm -hmm. Oh, someone's calling? Yeah. We have a caller here. Oh, all right. Hey. Jen, we have two calls. Oh, two minutes. Oh, okay. So, hi, caller. Thanks for calling in. We have two minutes. Hello? Hello? Hello. Oh, hello. I'm, I'm still on the line. Who is this? Who's hello? calling? Yes. Who am I speaking this to? This is Marsha. I'm calling from Washington, D.C. Hey, Marsha. Hey. Hey. Um, well, um, um, Stanley or Mr. Martin, I don't know what you want me to call you. I looked at your Broadway Mr. credits Martin. online. Um, you've been in so many amazing shows oh thank you and the thing is like i know that they don't always tell you when you're sh oh you, they don't always let you know when a show is going to end but it's like do you have like a five-year plan or a plan for honestly what i would want to do and i actually i haven't really talked about this um that much but what i would want to do is slowly but surely venture more into writing and possibly get on a series or even just like write my own screenplays yeah i'm literally projecting more and more into the writing than performing did that answer your what question what role would you actually want to play oh what role would i want to play on broadway oh the leading player in pippin i mean or, or, or just period i mean or just period oh yeah leading Maybe player so, um, leading player in pippin love that show oh, love I saw that pippin. Character. yeah that's a good one he wants to be Ben Vereen. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean. Okay. Uh, uh, Marsha, we have to cut off now because we're going to take a break. But we'll be. Thank you for okay. calling. Yeah, I thank really you for appreciate calling. it. All right. And, and congratulations again for being on Broadway for such a long, long time. Thank you, Marsha. Thank you. Awesome. All right, bye -bye. And we have one more other person. Or shall we? We're going to take that one. Oh, okay. We'll be right back. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Bye. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. Do you love or are you intrigued about New York City and its neighborhoods? I'm Jeff Goodman, host of Rediscovering New York, a weekly show that showcases New York's history and its extraordinary neighborhoods. Every Tuesday live at 7 p.m., we focus on a particular neighborhood and explore its history, its vibe, its feel, and its energy. Tune in live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on talkradio.nyc. Do you like comic books and movies? How about TV and pop culture? Then you've come to the right place. Hi, I'm Michael Dolce, host of Secrets of the Sire. Joined every week by my co-host, Hassan, Lord of the Radio Godwin. Together, we have over 15 years' experience creating graphic novels, screenplays, and more. Join us as we bring you the inside scoop on the pop culture universe you love to talk about. Wednesday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern, talkradio.nyc. Talking Alternative Radio, 24 hours a day. So we're back on Beyond Potential, Live Life Your Way, and I'm with Steve. No, I'm listening to Steve Martin. Oh my God. <laughs> you know what? I'll take the compliment. With everything he's See, accomplished, the, the I'll show, take look, it. The show is going really, really great because, <laughs> like I say, I always say this if I don't mess up your name, then we're not having a good show, right? <laughs> So I'm on the I'm on the call with Stanley Martin. There we go. Yes. 
<laughs> Steve, I was thinking of Steve Martin, the yeah. jerk. Oh my God. <laughs> I love that, that show. Yeah, yeah. I love that movie. Uh, so you were saying, tell us your story about you. No, yeah. So I'm um, auditioning for Aladdin when I finally got the call that they were going to give me an offer. It happened to be on April 1st. Mm -hmm. So when it's the casting amazing. director, literally, the casting director was like, so Stanley, Disney is going to offer you a role as an ensemble member in the show. I'm like, oh my God, that's so great. Wait a minute, are you joking? No, why would we be joking? I don't like, because it was Fool's April Day. Fool's. And then come to find out, I actually asked other cast members when they found out like the originals and a lot of them found out on April 1st and they had similar stories. <laughs> so I am I remember listening to one of your um your talks on radio mm -hmm. where you had to audition mm -hmm. for this role right yep and you had been doing it in seattle mm -hmm. for a number of years and they still and just for that one year and they one, still made me audition you still had to audition mm -hmm. what was that like um it was uh hmm, it was definitely a humbling experience to re-audition again but it was one of those things where after i came into the open call for it mm -hmm. um the casting director called me up and said, hey, Stanley, so Casey, the director choreographer for the show, was like, uh, Casey doesn't want you to go through that entire process, so he's just going to call you in at the very end of all the callbacks. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, I came in for the callback, had another callback, and then boom, got the offer. Right. Yeah. And you, I, in the, on the um, one of the interviews, you talked about something like people not looking like you. I assert that was being African-American. You are African-American. Yes, are you I'm, mixed race? Yes, I'm biracial, are but you? I consider myself african -American. Okay, so you one drop. Yeah, no, gosh. <laughs> wow, plenty of drops, honey. Mm, just mixed in there, huh? <laughs> so, okay, yeah, so you said that you didn't see a lot of people that look like you. Oh, God, no. And At what is all. that like? Like, you know, what is that like? I know what it's like, well, but what is that thing. like for you? Like, when I, growing up and going to all these different Broadway shows or just regional theaters, touring, whatever, mm -hmm. you generally get the consensus of, there's one token per cast mm -hmm. and sometimes you'll get one black person or one black woman. I mean, mm -hmm. one black man, one black woman, or just sometimes you'll just get the one black guy and that's it. And then they're like, Oh look, our show's so diverse. I'm like, you only got that's just okay fine right. whatever but it still didn't deter me from actually wanting to audition and right. wanting to get my face up on that stage right. so who is it that your mommy's black or your daddy's uh, my mom's black and my dad's white okay yeah and so when you were growing i guess you knew you were black because you have the mother right yeah because i usually find that my friends who are white and have the the father's black or another race they usually the kid is not usually aware of themselves until something happens in school where they oh yeah yeah no i grew up around like my mom and like her side of the family mm -hmm. more so than my dad's side mm -hmm. but yeah but yeah there was there was no way of being like oh no i'm white no i'm not white honey right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah. no no so there's a whole thing um on a whole netflix movie about this girl who is i think she lives in jersey or something and she thought she was white is that the one? I can't remember her name. I just came out with um, the, 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 the Chris Pine, the one that's on Hulu right now, and that's like a whole murder mystery kind of a thing. No, no, no. This is real life. Oh. This is a real life story of a young girl that grew up Jewish. Oh. Did not know she was black. Mm -hmm. But something happened mm -hmm. that her mother told her her mother had an affair mm -hmm. with a black man. Oh. And so, because she was, mother had curly hair, you mm -hmm. know, that curly hair. Yeah, yeah. Daughter had the curly hair, but she was slightly darker. Yeah, yeah. They just, you know, played into the fact that. Mm -hmm. And then there was this discovery that she wasn't. So she now has to go through this whole rebirthing of who she is and what she's about. Oh, and wow. then she went looking for her father mm -hmm. and found him just a few years before he died. Mm -hmm. So that's quite, you know, like. And that's that like, woman turned out to be Barbara Streisand. <laughs> Yes, it did. It was Barbara. <laughs> but no, no, don't laugh. There's that other woman, Ch Carol Channing. Yeah, I know. Oh, my God. But I always thought Carol Channing looked black to me. Yeah, she always had a little something, something about her. But yeah. it's one of those things where, like, back then, it was a whole thing of, like, if you have a drop, if you like what you said earlier. Right, right. The one drop rule. Yeah. yeah Again, Carol Channing was, out. I think <laughs> that's what um, made her so, like, prolific, mm -hmm. is that she was, she knew she was African-American, mm -hmm. and she knew that she had to be, she was not very big, but she had to be larger than, larger than life. And she had that soul that mm -hmm. made her so special. Yeah. So, okay. So there's not many people in that. Well, that, isn't that like a part, like when you watch TV, there's not that many no. black people. 
people no. on TV. Or they only they have like the black characters where they'll have like the one line or the oh, no always, lines. Or no lines or just extra sassy or just there, just giving looks or just, you know what I mean? Yeah, there's a show on now that's on Netflix. I've been watching a lot of shows on Netflix. I think it's it's called Mums or something. Like it's about these women that have babies mm-hmm. and they're it's you you know, those helicopter mothers and they're sitting in these play groups and ballet and the baby come back, can't hardly walk. But there's a one character in this, this black character. She comes to group all the time and she sits there like this. She just she has no lines, no words, nothing. And I'm like, in this day and age, this is still a thing. This is still a thing. Yeah. It's quite ridiculous. Or even, even if you look on network TV again, where they say, oh, we have diversity because you've got the one black woman who plays the secretary all the time. No, that's not diversity no. to me. And I think that we need to make a louder noise and let people know. Mm-hmm. People, that is not diversity. One black person that doesn't have a line is not diver- I can be mm-hmm. an actress. I tried the acting <laughs> thing one time. Um, I tried to do that one time. I thought when I first came to New York and I auditioned for, oh God, um, there was some movie that Tom Hanks was in. And uh, well, I can't remember. Maybe. Bonfires of the Vanity. Oh, like Bonfires yeah. of the Vanity. Yeah, right. yeah. And um, I actually just sat there for the day and was like, I am not fucking doing this. Mm-hmm. This is not for me. Because yeah. there was a lot of sitting around, a mm-hmm. lot of waiting. Mm-hmm. If you're an extra, you're just there. Like, Oh, yeah. Oh, it's horrible. You are the bottom of the top. Like, so that's why it's really seriously important that this is something that you want to do. It mm-hmm. has to be something that you feel from your gut yeah. that you want to do. Because for me, that would, was wasting my time. And you have to have the stick to to mm-hmm. pursue it. Mm-hmm. Like this has to be something that you really How do you deal with rejection? Um, oh, you haven't been rejected very much. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, no. The amount of shows I have been rejected from uh-huh. ever since I was like, ever since I started auditioning professionally since I was like 10. So uh-huh. that was, oh. So what that was like as a 10, compared from, from then to now, what's it like as a 10 year old? You know, how have you matured into rejection? It's one of those things where I use that as like, I don't know, just something that you have to go through in uh-huh. life. Like you're going to get rejected. There's certain jobs that you're not going to get. So you just have to take it on the chin, move on and try harder next time uh-huh. or go for something else. Was it like, mommy, they don't like me. Oh God, no, I didn't care. <laughs> it was one of those things where I was just like, okay, so I didn't get that job, but at least I have these auditions coming up next. Okay. Like I, yeah. So it's not like, so you don't take it as rejection. You just take it as, no, you're not right for that spot. You yeah. The next thing. Yeah. The only time it ever really hits me is if it's a project that I really want. Mm-hmm. Like when I auditioned for um, the original Color Purple tour um, that came out, was it back in 2000? Why, you, you went dark enough? Six, seven. No, they had a lot of light-skinned people in that oh, really? show too. Yeah. Um, but it was one of those things where I made it all the way to the end of the callback and the casting called me and they were just like, yeah, we loved you. We thought you were great, but I'm sorry, we're not going to use you for this tour, but please keep auditioning for us. I'm like, oh, okay, that's great. I was in my bed for like three, four hours after the fact. So, so what is it like? I mean, I know people get jobs. I know that, but what is, what is one of the things that they're rejected for? Is it because you don't have a specific look? You don't have a specific height? It could be what is any it? number Your of reasons. Yeah. It's one of those things where I like, especially with my play, like being on the other side of the table, it just what did you yeah so people auditioned like, for you what mm-hmm. was, what was the thing that you is it something tangible or is it something that it's a mixture of things sometimes it's okay well we have this person cast and we want someone that's like kind of close to this height so it, it could be like a lot of that it could be like oh this person isn't understanding the text or the character or what we're asking for right now and even so you got that and then you also have like directional things like if the director is saying okay so you said the lines like this now why don't you try to go in this direction with it and they still don't take the note or you could feel like there's a little bit of an attitude or whatever like there are so many different reasons yeah for the most part it's never anything i don't know yeah ever ever um yeah yeah it's never anything personal even though i have heard stories of like directors being like well my friend said this about this person, so I'm not going to cast them. Let me ask you a quick. So have you ever been like, people say to him, if you want the spot, like, has anybody ever spoken to you in that way? If you want this position, you're oh, going to have to. God, no. Oh, Cause okay. I got a mouth on me. <laughs> <laughs> no. so you, you, are, you are not the one. <laughs> no. And anytime like someone has tried to do something like that, never like casting couch scenario wise, I tend to flip it back on them uh-huh. and I just dig in. 
yeah, I'm not the one for any of that. So of you're very stuff. confident in yeah, yeah. Oh, God, so who do yeah. you think they who do you think they prey on? They prey on people. They generally always like to uh, prey on people that are considered loners or people that pe- peeper people that the are peepers. a little bit like peepers peeper people. <laughs> We have a really great show, Peepers and um, <laughs> Steve Martin. And it could be any number of reasons. It just like it could be that the person is actually just sexually attracted to whoever they think right. they can get away with stuff. And sometimes it's like the whole power exchange of like, well, I can help you out if you do. I'm like, what's what's it? So it sounds like that. What was the name of that guy that that um he had, was a he had a lot of power. Harvey and, Weinstein. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what what do you think of that whole scenario? I'm glad he got what's coming to him. Oh, actually, no, he hasn't gotten what's coming to him yet because he hasn't gone to court yet, right? I have no idea. Yeah, I'm just like I'm waiting. I'm waiting for that court date, and I I'm kind of waiting for them to have like a lifetime movie on him mm-hmm. with all of those starlets. Because mm-hmm. come on, you got like Gwyneth Paltrow, you got Angelina Jolie, you got Ashley Judd, you have Lupita Nyong'o. She's got a story on him too, and Jill Scott, not just like all like the skinny white girls. Jill Scott. Like, yeah, like she has um she had a story about him as well, and like Salma Hayek. Like you have. All these powerful women in Hollywood, they need to get together and do like a whole like lifetime movie on his ass. So what do you think about that? Do you think like, so did they engage with him or did they not engage with him, these women? It depends on the woman because a couple of them, no, Salma Hayek, she did not engage. She actually shut his ass down several times because mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember that because she did the whole op-ed um, um, on the New York Times talking about her experience when she was doing Frida. Mm-hmm. Yeah, did you ever see that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, and just all like the extra shenanigans he was like trying to do to her being like, you know, well, I'm in this towel, why don't you come up, da 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 like all that kind I'm of- I'm in a what? He was in like his bathroom, said, bathroom mm, not towel. Yeah. <laughs> but like how he's trying to harass her, like all that bullshit, right. so yeah. Does, do you think anything like that happens on your show? No, nobody. Please, no. And none of that would happen because I feel like it would be you're all, Disney. It would be in the news so quickly. Right, because like, you're Disney. Yeah, yeah. You're supposed to be wholesome. Yeah, well, the wholesome, yes, but at the same time, like working with that company, that person would be fired on the spot. Right. Yeah, like no, Disney doesn't play with that. Yeah, and so I just found out that um, Aladdin, 17th century, I guess the person that wrote it didn't know that it would be a Disney franchise. franchise. Oh, I know. Yeah, Disney wasn't even a thing. Uh, of course 17th not. century. <laughs> Disney, 17th oh century. <laughs> wasn't that called Euro Disney then too? <laughs> <laughs> I know, it probably wasn't. I'm sure we can think of something that it was called, but it wasn't that. But we're going to take a break and we'll be right back. <laughs> You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. The best designs for your life start at home. I'm David Thiergartner, interior designer and host of At Home. Listen live Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Time as we talk to the very best professionals about interior design and the design that's all around us right here on talkradio.nyc. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your Conscious Consultant, and on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern Time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. TalkingAlternative.com
technically supposed to. So we're back on Beyond Potential, Live Life Your Way, and I am with Stanley Martin, not Steve Martin. <laughs> and we don't have peepers. <laughs> Well, I do. I have like two. So, so <laughs> you do your peepers? Peepers right oh, here. Eyes, right. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we just asked you a question. What's your favorite? My all-time favorite show is Hamilton. At one point, it was Into the Woods because I grew up watching a VHS copy of Bernadette Peters' version mm -hmm. from like 1987. Mm -hmm. I wore that VHS out so much so that I actually even would bring it into my elementary school all the time and just make everybody watch it. Like I love show and tell. Yes. Oh my god. And the teachers loved it because they're like, we don't have to work. Were right you now. one of those annoying kids that was always dancing around the classroom? No, I was dancing around outside in the playground, not in the classroom. Okay. Yeah. So, so you would, did you have dance troops and all that kind of stuff? No, but there were a couple of times where the kids were like, well, show me something, teach me something, do that. I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. Find somebody else to do it. Go take class. Do uh, what I, like do it the way that I'm doing it right now. Yeah. <laughs> So Hamilton is your all-time favorite show. All-time favorite show. I've only I've only gotten the chance to see it once because I was able to get like a standing room uh, uh, ticket. But yeah, I'm not spending thousands of dollars just to go see that show again. So it's like, an, you just mentioned that it was an upsell that... Yeah. Um, the well, a, a lot of that has to do with the fact that like you have these ticket brokers that buy, buy out blocks of tickets and then upsell it. Like it right. has nothing to do with the theater itself or like, you know, Lin-Manuel or the producers or anything like that. It's just these ticket brokers like trying to make a profit. Yeah, well, they do make a profit. A hundred dollar oh, yeah. ticket going for like 400, 500. At one point, it, I remember it went up to like... 5,000, and oh. this is when it was in its heyday, like right when it opened, like right before the Tonys and all that too. Right. Yeah. Cool. So why why Pippin? Why Pippin? And that's another one that I grew up loving. It's just something about seeing Ben Vereen as like a lead character. It wasn't anything about like racial, racial discrimination right. or any kind of BS like that. He just was doing his call. He was just doing his thing. And it just, and he did it flawlessly because I grew up watching a VHS copy of that too and once I saw his performance I'm like who is this person I need to follow his career like yeah <clears throat> so I want to ask a question with all these um shows that they have on Broadway now like was it Superman and they're just doing like remakes of things and putting it on Broadway what do you feel about it? is that real craft you or mean like revivals or like what, what do you mean like like shows or situations that weren't shows like oh like uh, shows that were movies that they turned right. into like musicals right um it depends on the musical and what they bring to the table if they try I think to, it's kind of odd eh, it de again it all depends because sometimes it works and other times it's just like well better luck next time and so who's running the whole show down there? Is it Disney? Um, Disney only has, how many shows? Uh, no, nope, they have three Broadway shows right now. They have um, Aladdin, Lion King, and Frozen. Mm -hmm. All three of them are selling well. But you have other producers who produce like many other shows on Broadway. Who are so is things. it like Frozen, right? That was a kid, I'd say that was a kid's show, yeah. right? Is it like kids that come or adults? It's kids, adults. Well, I mean, obviously the kids can't come by themselves. They right. have parents. Yeah. So it's like, it's I'm a good. mixture. <laughs> Mommy, I'll meet you by the door. <laughs> well, well no. you could back in the day. Now you can't. You'd be arrested for child abuse. Oh, Damn. yeah. It's no. how many children. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so Disney has three. Who has the most show? Which other companies are down there? Oh, my God. I guess the Nederlander. I feel like they have at least three, four different shows that are going on right now. Mm -hmm. I honestly don't know which particular. I think, what is that? Ain't Too Proud is one. Whatever's in the Nederlander right now, which is Pretty Woman. And I think they have like two, three other shows that are out. Right. But yeah. And so other than Hamilton, what are the most popular shows? What's the most, well, Hamilton's the most popular one. After that, it goes down the line of like Lion King. Um, it's been selling, selling really well. Wicked, <laughs> Wicked that opened up. <laughs> Wicked 10,000 years ago. Yeah, like back in October of 2003. Pulled uh -huh. that statistic out of my behind. <laughs> um, and that's been going strong uh -huh. for forever. We, we've been open for five years and we're still doing our thing. Uh -huh. um, what else? That's the only, those are the only ones I can think of that. Oh, Dear Evan Hansen, that's selling extremely well. Who, what? Dear Evan Hansen. Don't know what that is. Brand new musicals, not based off of a movie. It's not based off a jukebox. It's not based off of some kind of, I got, like, brand new musical. You what about, um, Antonio Ward -Winning. is it Dreaming, which was, uh, was it Dreaming? That, um, oh, Beautiful, Beautiful. Yeah, that's still going on. It's still going on. Mm -hmm. That looks like a really good chat. They opened with us with um, Aladdin for that season, for like the Tony Award season. 
Cool. Mm -hmm. Um, what else? I, there was another question that I wanted to ask you, but now it's popped out of my head. Yes. Is there anything that people should know about you? Oh, well. Other than your fabulous. Oh my God. Well, I try. Um, thank you. <laughs> I... <laughs> um, no, there's, I guess, I don't know. How would you, like somebody is like, has this kid that wants to be in theater, what would you advise them to say to do with that kid? Make sure this is something that you really want to do. Because this business will try everything in its power to break you down. But if you have that really? confidence and the stick to itiveness to pursue it and that desire and that drive, then I say go for it. But make sure <clears throat> go to all the right classes, like make sure acting classes, voice lessons, dance classes, like try it all. Right. Yeah. And what would you say to a parent? who has a kid that wants to do this, like your mother, this was her part of her career. Be supportive. Right? First and foremost, be supportive. Because I grew I grew up in a dance studio. Right. So I've seen all kinds of parents who just kind of drop their kids off. And like you have these kids who are just like, I want to like pursue dancing for a living, who I think are talented beyond belief. And like if they really wanted to go for it, they could have went for it and like became something. Right. But you have a lot of family members being like, Ugh, you, you want to be a dancer? Ugh, you want to be a singer? Are you sure about that? I don't know. Or just not even show up to different recitals, um, different plays, different musicals. Like it's, it's insane. And right. then they decide, oh, well, since my family's not supporting me and I'm, I don't really have any support anywhere else, I, I guess this is what I'm not doing. Or they fight against it. Like the family will literally just be like, no, you shouldn't do that. Study this, and then after that, they're stuck with a job that they're not happy with. Right, that's human nature. Mm -hmm. That's human nature. So, going forward into the future, what do you want for you? What do I want for me? Yeah, I want to accomplish so much more. I want to start working on screenplays. I want to start working on TV. Not pilots. want to. You are. Uh huh. You are doing it now. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. Just. Give more chances to people of color to work on an offset as mm -hmm. well as on on stage and off stage, mm -hmm. like as including like my production right. teams. Be and stuff more like that. diversified. Mm -hmm. I mean, like even with my show right now, it's extremely diversified. The amount of women that are working in it, the amount of people of color that are working in it, on and off stage, like mm -hmm. creating, designing, all the whole gambit. Mm -hmm. It's very diversified. Yeah. Awesome. I Great. do not play any games. <laughs> <laughs> I so do what I say. what's um. What one word that would sum up? Or, okay, let's, let's ask this question. So it's like the end of your life. You're mm -hmm. on your deathbed. You're 102. Or like that woman who's 114 now. Mm -hmm. Right? Just recently she turned 114. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. People are living a lot longer. Yeah. So you're on your deathbed. Yeah. And um, what's that one thing? Or what's, what do you want to have people say about you? Like, in your eulogy or on your deathbed that you've accomplished, you've lived the life that you've wanted to live. What would you, what would it look like? Rose, but no. Um, <laughs> I stupid ass. <laughs> I was just like, I just wanted to say this I was just like, what does that mean? It's a sled. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you want to slay down 40 seconds? <laughs> Mm -mm. I just want to be totally lived my life fully and be completely crispy. And I want people to go, damn, she rocked it out. Yes. She fucked it out. Um, he went for it. I just, yeah. He truly, he was unstoppable. He was unstoppable. Yeah. He went for it. First and foremost, I wasn't going to let anything get in my way. Nothing. Nothing. Not color, not race, not mm -mm. nothing. No. I'm not here. Yeah. Again, like I always said, I'm not here for it. Nothing's going to stop me to get what I need. Right. Yeah. And do what you want. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Give me a high five on yeah. that. I love that. Yeah. That's so, so great. So we've come to the, we're, we're almost at the end of the show. Yes. And I, please, I want you to shout out what you're up to again. Okay. So we've got I've, Dawn Rose. Rosebud. Rosebud. <laughs> um, my first, my very first written play um, called Opportunity is playing at the Strawberry One Act Festival. Um, hosted by the Riant Theater at Theater 54 at Shetler Studios, 244 West 54th Street on the 12th floor. Um, you can see it at Friday at 6 p.m. and Saturday at 9.15 p.m. That's and March 22nd that? okay, and March 23rd. Right. So that's yes. March 22nd and March 23rd. Mm -hmm. And we'll put it on the, on the yes. you know. Yeah. And you can here. get tickets at the theater.com. 
awesome. Mm-hmm. So thank you so much. I feel like I know you forever. Ah. But thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for the people. Oh my God. Thank you so much for having me. I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it was a myself. Pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. And guys, we'll see you next week. Same bat time, same at bat mm-hmm. station, beyond potential. Bye. Bye. Live beyond potential. Bye. Bye. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. Ding, 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 ding